Hi everyone, welcome back. Josh Beatar and Alex Goldman here for From the Stands and um, once again joined by the PFL Flyweight who returns to action uh, April 4th in San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas taking on Jenna Bishop in the first round uh, of the uh, newly crowned PFL Million Dollar Flyweight Tournament. Chelsea Hackett. Chelsea, always a pleasure to um, catch up and chat. How have things been with you since we spoke last? Hey guys, yeah, so good to chat to you again. You, yeah, I love talking to you guys. You're my awesome. favourite for sure. Awesome. Um, yeah, no, everything's really good. Everything's going really well. Um, obviously, it was announced I'm in the tournament this year. So mm-hmm. that's very exciting for me. Um, just my family, my yeah. team. Like, it's just a very, um, yeah, big opportunity for me. So I- I'm so stoked. I'm so excited. And yeah, I've, I've pretty much been working off the back of my last fight. So, mm-hmm. um, doesn't really feel like like obviously I'm in camp and and we're getting close now, but it just the training hasn't stopped, so I'm feeling really good. Awesome. Well, let's sort of touch on that first. Um, obviously a big tournament this year, and I think from a name perspective, I think it's one of the best tournaments the PFL has in the weight brackets. Um, we're also with the integration of Bellator. I mean, yes. you've got Liz Carmouche, ladies like Talia Santos, and of course Dakota Dechaver, the one that you want. Of course, we want to see that too. Um, yeah. it's just, it's, it is a star-studded lineup, in my opinion. Um, I guess, what are your thoughts on the whole bracket itself? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. It's got such a high level um, of women across the board, and yeah, coming from um, them acquiring Bellator, we've got all of that that talent as well in the pool. So. Um, it's funny, like I haven't, you know, given the the girls much thought, I think because for me, like it's still, they're still individual fights and mm-hmm. my main focus is who's in front of me right now and that's Jenna Bishop. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, when they released, obviously we didn't know um, who was in the tournament before it got released. So, yeah, when it was released, I'm like, epic, awesome, there's some big names in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but apart from that, you know, I haven't, given it like yeah my my main focus is Jenna and you know if you get too ahead of yourself then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot so um yeah we've still got each individual fight to get that um last the championship fight the million dollars and um yeah I think it's just such a yeah it's such a good group of girls I'm very excited yeah yeah you know, Chelsea, while this, you know, this tournament is obviously going to be, you know, a monumentous chapter, you know, in your story that is, you know, essentially just still in the early stages of it, you know, your career's got so long left to go. But I'm curious, you know, what is a career highlight for you so far? Um, a career highlight for me, it would have to be my last fight for sure. Um, you know, coming off the back of such a big break, haven't not fighting for three mm. years. And off the back of like a, a tough loss for me. Um, yeah, it was a big statement for me to make, you know, coming back into the international pool, you know, I didn't like go back and and go back to just fighting Aussies, which I just couldn't get fights. So, um, you know, the whole world was watching again, but, um, I didn't feel the pressure that this time, you know, in my PFL debut, I just felt comfortable. I felt ready and just older and more mature. So I felt like I could really um like embrace the opportunity whereas contender you know it was it was a it was almost like too much too soon so yeah my last fight was definitely a career highlight so far but we're about to add some more to that (laughs) what's up guys it's uh it's josh here from the stands and look i know you're in the middle uh of a good little interview that we're currently doing but i want to take a second of your time just to give a quick little shout out to today's sponsor uh train aid obviously they're uh they're big supporters of us like we are um, of them and today they're uh, they're sponsoring this video um, and look I want to I want to let you guys know about a little product they do their, their premium product train aid hydration um, it's the best hydration formula on the market guys I'm not gonna not gonna lie to you and look if you don't believe me ask guys like Israel Adesanya Alexander Volkanovsky Leon Edwards you ever heard of these guys I mean they're the top athletes in the world uh, and they're all taking train aid hydration um, it really is the number one formula um, in the world for hydration. And in, in the summer months here in Australia, I mean, it's something that uh, I think everyone should be taking. Um, and Trainade have, uh, have been very nice uh, to give us a discount code, a very healthy di- discount code as well. I mean, it's a nice little discount code. If you use the code FTS15 at the checkout, um, they will give you 15% off. Um, we'll leave a link um, to their website in, in this uh, description of this video. And uh, yeah, check them out, guys. Please support them. Um, because they are supporting us. Cheers. 
<laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely um well on the tournament it's a it's a pretty grueling thing this this tournament style um obviously four fights if you get to the million dollar um you know finale i suppose in terms of training wise does, from a training perspective does anything need to be adjusted or, or changed at all to, to to accommodate such an intense setup where you know you're competing every mm. two months you know pretty pretty quickly yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny, like I think what we've got going at TFC um, is like the perfect system for this type of tournament. Mm -hmm. So like, yes, it's going to be grueling on the body and, you know, I'll be fighting pretty much every eight weeks if I go through every round. So um, taking that into consideration, like how we train, not giving like much away, but like we, we train all year round. So um, my last two fights, like this camp and my camp before, have felt not like massive fight camps, if that makes sense. You know, yeah. like it's more about like tweaking and adjusting and strategy for like certain opponents. Yeah. So um, I'm actually really excited because I do feel like I I stay training all year round and I stay in shape. I stay pretty much ready so um for me it's like more exciting you know like the the biggest thing is you don't want to get injured after fights yeah. um that's the biggest thing so i think going into the tournament with a good strategy um you know obviously not playing it safe because it is also a point system so you know yeah. if, if you, you knock them out or finish them in the first round you get the most amount of points second round is smaller and then third round is smaller. So it's, it's so unique. No, mm. there's nothing else like it. Mm. Um, and that's what excites me the most. Like, I'm just like, it's going to be so competitive <laughs> and I can't wait. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And, you know, you know, look on top of, you know, everything, you know, obviously changing things, you know, a little bit here and there to adjust for this, you know, you just talked about it that now it's more about tweaking things rather than maybe mm. adding new skill sets, constantly adding new techniques do you think as well part of that sort of maybe shift in your training is is you having more confidence in yourself as a fighter today, you know, that you are yeah. confident in your skill set and what you know that, you know, it's basically that that old idea of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's more about, 100%. as you say, tweaking. Is that kind of how you're feeling right now? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like um, all of my development or like everyone's development should happen out of camp, you know, like you should be training all year round and you should be adding more tools to your toolbox out of camp so that when you do get a matchup and you're, you're doing an eight week camp, you have all the tools already. Yeah. It's just picking the right tools for the job. And I love that. Like that's what I, my mentality mentality going into this fight is it's like, yeah, you know, I've got a challenge in front of me, but I have developed all the right, tools i just have to pick the right ones for jenna and um yep. i have full confidence that you know me ben um we talk about it we strategize and we know exactly mm. what we're going in for and, and what we need to do absolutely um and i know you you on the tournament um perspective in terms of names i know you said you haven't taken a lot of time to process who is in the bracket and those sort of things but i guess we could do that now then because when i spoke with steven erseg and you know i brought up the possibility of him fighting kai kai france he said well you know that's a guy he grew up watching and and now he's being talked in that conversation obviously fighting for a title now but for you though you know liz carmouche was someone who's, who's she's an og of the flyweight division she's an og of, of women's mma i mean she fought for titles 10 10, 10 plus years ago um, yeah. and you know, that would have been someone you grew up at least watching someone as well, like, like Talia Santos, who's more, more so recently, um, you know, been in, been in this, like, it, it's, it's wonderful to see. So what is that like for you knowing that you'll be competing against these ladies? I don't know. Like, I, I haven't thought about it. I really haven't thought about it because like, obviously they're not my next fight up, but, um, it'll be just another girl and just another fight by the time we're matched. And that's honestly yeah. like my mindset. Um, like, yeah, I'm honestly, I have a job to do and like, that's all I'm thinking about. And I, I know that they're veterans and, um, you know, a lot of them are a lot older as well. Like they're in their mid to late thirties, you know, they've been in the UFC, they're coming over to the PFL for, for their second shot as such. But um, you've got girls like me and Dakota, we're 25, you know, we're young, we're hungry, um, you know, we're not backing down and we're definitely not going to be walked through. Like we, we, we're coming to fight. So um, 
like of course I respect their experience, but um it's it's gonna be a competitive game and I'm coming to win. So I really don't care who of those girls is in front of me, I'll take them out one by one, up the ladder, and then we get to the top. Love it. Yeah. My question is, you know, obviously you just mentioned it there, you know, you're still a young fighter. You're still, you know, got so much left to go. But, you know, I'm curious, as a young fighter, is it sometimes hard to kind of block out the distractions, you know, friends, families, people wanting to go party, people wanting to go out, you know, everything kind of like that. Because, you know, we see it kind of talked about a lot, you know, when, you know, with younger champions that, you know, they're going to get caught up in the distractions, they're going to get pulled yeah. off their game. Is that ever at all difficult for you to kind of not get caught up in any of those distractions? No. Uh, I've I've been like when I, I say I've been committed to this guy like to fighting for a long time like I I cut out all distractions a long time ago and it, it's not hard for me it's how I live my life um and it's how I've lived for a long time I don't party I don't drink I um I eat healthy all the time I I feel my body to train I feel my body to compete um. I have the friends that I do have completely understand. They're super supportive. Um, if they don't, unfortunately, that friendship probably ended and like and and weeded itself out because like this is my main priority and and this like I take this very seriously. This is my life. This is uh, how I want to make my money. This is how I want to live. Um, and the biggest thing is I enjoy it. It's not a punish for me. Like me cutting out distractions is not punishment. I've chosen to to live this life and it comes with those things. And I've never like thought twice about it. Never, I've never wished my life to be different. Like I literally have not wished <laughs> that I would be at a party or at a festival or drinking with friends. Like you ask anyone, ask my parents, ask my partner, like, like I'm the biggest homebody when I'm not at the gym, I'm at home watching YouTube, I'm studying fights, I'm, I'm just hooked to the game. So, yeah. um, and I've been like that for a long time. Like I had my first fight when I was 13. So, um, yeah, I, I, I've never had problems with distractions and that's a choice that I've made. Absolutely. Um, Chelsea, last couple of ones from us. Um, teammate of yours, Ben Johnston, picking up a, uh, a massive <laughs> win on, on Saturday, winning the middleweight title. Um, yeah. As well as, a, you know, getting the stoppage win, I guess that is more emphatic as well. Um, I mean, I love Ben. I think he's a great bloke. I think I, I think the UFC is in his cards. I think he's, yeah. he's he's right there, I guess. What did you think of that performance and, and where his future lies now? Oh, it was awesome. Like, I have such anxiety when I watch <laughs> anyone else fight that I, yeah. that's close to me. And yeah. um I just was sweating. I was sick. I felt <laughs> ill. I was like, I wish I was in there because I never <laughs> feel like you, you're always fine when you're uh, fighting. Uh. Um, but no, like I just was so confident. Like he were, he is the hardest worker. Like mm. he, I don't, I seriously don't know how Ben does it. He coaches us full time. He obviously fights himself full time. He is knocking on the UFC's door. His next fight, I'm, um, pushing that it's in Perth in August yeah. for that card because yeah. um he he's like the most deserving person um and fighter of that opportunity and um just the way that he finished that fight on the weekend like you just made a statement you know yeah. like Fraser is a tough dude and he was the champ like it's one thing winning a title when it's vacant it's another thing winning a title taking it off the champ so yeah. that's a huge statement in itself and um yeah, no, I'm stoked. I'm stoked yeah. because obviously he's coming over to Texas with me and, um, yeah, take yeah. another win. Yeah. And then we just keep going. Roll on. Yeah. 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 Chelsea, you know, I wanted to know, you know, being in this tournament, you know, having regular competition, regular fights on the horizon, you know, almost like a, a somewhat clear plan of what's next. Yeah. Yeah. Has that just made it so much easier to just dial in even more? You don't have to worry about now that other side yes. of, you know, no one wants to fight me. I can't get fights. Yeah. You know, this happened, this happened. Yeah. There's a plan now, you know, there's something in place. Is it just so much easier for you to just dial in and just focus on training as a martial artist? 100%. And like coming from like the hardships I've had with inactivity and injuries and visa problems and girls not wanting to fight. So like coming from such struggles in that, I just feel like, I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. The path 
is planned for me now and all I have to do is execute and I have to win and I have to, um, I just have to show up. And, like, I'm so, like, the calmness I feel now, like, it's just wild. Like, coming into this fight, I'm just calm. I'm confident because, like, we train so much. Like, I train, we train for, like, over, like, 22, 23 hours a week easily. And it's, like, I'm just constantly repping this out. Like, I could just do this blindfolded. Like, I can do it in my sleep. So, like, having that confidence coming into this tournament is huge. And I just, I'm so excited that, like, you're right. I have a set date. Like, every Mm. eight weeks I'm on. Yeah. I win, I move to the next round. So um, it's honestly a dream come true. And, like, no other organisation does this, you know. Mm. So, like, it's for, for pulling this off and um, giving us the opportunity to stay really active. Absolutely. Chels, we know you're in your car, so we'll let you go. Thank you so much, as always, for the time. It's always a pleasure to um, to catch up with you, obviously. Just under Legends. three weeks' time now, uh, you'll be back in the cage, and um, we can't wait to uh, to see you perform, see you get a win, and then uh, and then we'll chat again before your next fight. Thanks you for the time, as always. Legends, thank you so much, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Chels. Thank you.